Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is David Chesney, White Rock City Councilor and Editor of the White Rock Sun. David, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, James. Nice to be back with you. Well, every first Saturday of the month since you've been elected to City Council there, you've held what you call your community conversation. What are people talking about? Well, this was number four, uh, in that it took a while to find a location and, and get the events publicized. Um, and in addition to myself, uh, I am joined uh, by uh, my fellow councillor, Helen Fathers. So she uh, she saw the value and, and wanted to be able to talk with members of the community. So there's actually the two of us councillors that are part of the community conversation, uh, Jim. <clears throat> so what do people want to talk about? Well, they just pretty much want to talk about anything and, and have the feeling that somebody's actually listening to them and is going to get back to them with answers. So we have a lot of big issues here in White Rock. Uh, some of it has, has reached the media in Vancouver. Uh, most recently, the decimation of the hump, which in White Rock, anybody that's been to White Rock knows that our town and on the seaside is clearly divided between East Beach and West Beach and divided by a beautiful growth area called the hump by locals and because it's sort of a hill that you go up out of one side of town down into the other. So the city uh, decided that they were going to do what was Build and sold to council as vegetation control and ended up being nothing more than a clear cut for half of the beautiful uh, hump. And uh, now we're sort of sitting here wondering and waiting to see uh, what the city has planned for the rest of it. Um, and, you know, some of the residents that live on Marine Drive <clears throat> have had their views uh, increased immensely. I understand their, their pleasure with that, but generally speaking, from what I can uh, figure out the majority of the residents and the visitors to White Rock were shocked and horrified with what was, what was done to the hump. Basically turned a beautiful green space into nothing short of a moonscape. Well, they did the same thing, too, <clears throat> on uh, Marine Drive in southeast Vancouver, where the trees used to arch over the the highway, and now it's just been clear-cut straight down to the river and it looks pretty ugly. Yeah, not familiar with that particular area, but... Uh, uh, Anytime you chop down trees in an area that has lots of trees, we notice. Yeah, Surrey's been uh, Surrey's been laying waste, uh, you know, with the massive growth that's going on. I just drove down King George Highway up towards Newton yesterday or the other day, and just a huge area, uh, piles, massive piles of trees that have been knocked down that they're just going to burn. I mean, I would think at the very least, you know, chop them up, put them at the side of the road and say free firewood. I don't know, but anyways, they just seem to be piling them up and burning them, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. The, uh, you know, I know Mayor Watts before she vacated City Hall expressed concern that they were losing a lot of their canopy in Surrey. And I was like, well, <laughs> this happened under the two years of term that she was a mayor. That's for sure. Massive growth in Surrey. So I understand that, uh, you know, with growth comes, uh, you know, the need to, to, uh, <clears throat> deforest, shall we say, some of the areas, but I don't think you have to clear cut them. They find it a whole lot easier to just go in and lay waste everything and then come back in and put a couple of shrubs up and go there. We've replaced all the vegetation. Not I know, I know one issue that caught a lot of people's eyes too. Do you still have a problem with coal dust coming off the coal trains from the U.S. into Delta Port? Yeah. Is that still happening? Well, it still is, and, uh, you know, it's still winding through the courts. There's voters taking action against climate change and communities and coal here. Uh, a semi uh peninsula-based organization uh, are taking the uh, Fraser Docks to court to uh, to see what they can do about uh, limiting the amount of coal that is, is uh, you know, planned to be shipped out of Surrey because Delta Port is, is at the max now. They can't take any more coal out of there. So they're looking at trying to do something along the Fraser Docks area. Originally, they were basically going to <clears throat> dump it off in Surrey, put it on a barge, drag it down the river, up to Texada Island, where they could load it onto a deep-sea uh, going vessel. Well, now Surrey Docks wants to expand their application to Metro Port Metro to to be able to have tankers come up the Fraser River to pick up the coal uh, at Surrey Docks, which kind of confirms what all of us believed when Christy Clark was talking about removing the tunnel and putting a bridge over where the Dees Island Tunnel is. That was not to really in increase traffic, at least not vehicle traffic. Right now, there's only something like 13 or 14 feet of water draw 
uh, on top of that tunnel, so you can't bring the big ships up. So that's part of the replace. Let's replace the tunnel, put a big bridge in there, and then we can bring great big tankers up the Fraser River uh, and pick up the coal and God knows what else. And and let me say right off the bat, I'm not against the uh, industrialization of the Fraser River, but this is also the the biggest uh, salmon spawning river in North America. And I think, you know, every effort has to be made uh, that uh, commerce doesn't get in the way of, of, of our cultural uh, background and certainly salmon fishing on the Fraser River for the First Nations and a lot of other people alike uh, is very important. So I just wish they'd be a little straighter and more honest with the people. Uh, so anyways, to, to answer your question, the coal is still rolling through White Rock, uh, heading to Delta Port. And um, we will probably see at some point in time, at the very least, increased uh, rail traffic through here out of Surrey um, on those barges and up to Texada Island uh, until they get the bridge built, which is, you know, according to the sign on Highway 99 I saw the other day, they're going to start building that bridge in 2016. So whether that's just an election promise, I don't know, but it's more than just a rumor. Are people expressing any concern that, Environmental hearings now don't mean anything because the federal cabinet can overrule them. Well, I don't know that 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 is specifically. I think people are very concerned at, at all levels that their their protests uh, are not being heard, uh, or they are being heard but not being uh, fairly adjudicated. I think people are thinking that it's just why bother? We know exactly what they're going to do, um, but I don't think that that's ever a resolution that we should uh, be content with. What about? But it seems to me a, a lot of revolts happening on uh, small city councils. Lance Phil, four of the seven councillors, have resigned. And apparently this goes back to some zoning ruling that shut down an organic farm seven years ago, and they're still fighting this battle. I don't know the exact details of, of Lance Phil. We were talking a little bit about that off the air. Um, there's you know, there's a, a problem up in Grand Forks as well. It see, I don't think, you know, and White Rock certainly, as I say, has, has made the, the mainstream, uh, news media outside of White Rock, uh, with some of the shenanigans that have gone on down here. And I think it's going to continue. We've got some very big issues. Our water is, uh, is something, you know, is presently owned by the city of Edmonton, a side corporation of Edmonton called EPCOR controls our water here in White Rock. And we're looking about the pos- looking at the possibility of whether or not uh, we will reacquire the water from 1948 on. It used to be owned by a private firm here, a family called, and their company was called White Rock Water Utilities. And when it came time for them to retire, they decided that they would try to sell it to the city, and the city said we're not interested. And EPCOR came in and said we're more than interested. They've been buying up water systems all over North America, and I think you can see. What a smart move that was. Take a look in California and watch what's happening to our produce uh, prices already at the local market. You know, they're having a drought in California, and it's going to get worse all over. I mean, water is, you know, you can live without oil. You can't live without water. It's going to be an incredibly valuable commodity. Now, White Rock is not allowed to profit from the uh, at, at the present time, so that's not, a, uh, that's not the reason for buying it back. Presently, a million dollars goes out of our community uh, to the city of Edmonton. So part of the case where we'll have uh, consultations with the community here, but it makes a lot of business sense to keep that money in our community. Well, Edmonton's been pretty smart when it comes to utilities. I mean, they still own their own phone company. They still own their own power company. Right. So, you know, for them to control somebody else's utilities, they, they know a good deal, I guess, when they see one. Yeah, it's not just in Canada. I can't remember where I was in New Mexico a few years ago, and I saw an EPCOR truck. Um, and when I came home, I looked it up. Um, EPCOR's got a, a number of water systems in America as well. So, um, as I say, it was a it was a venture created by the uh, city of Edmonton, but it operates at an arm's length, but fully funded, and the people of Edmonton benefit from the profits of it. Nothing wrong with that. We'll have more with David Chesney right after this. More and more people are looking to the Internet for intelligent, riveting, and thought-provoking interviews. To advertise on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com, call 604-699-8600. 604-699-8600. In Goddard We Trust. Welcome back. We're speaking with White Rock, B.C. City Councilor David Chesney. David, although you've only had four of your community conversations 
overall, do people feel happier that they have a chance to talk directly to City Hall? Uh, do they feel other City Hall should be doing a better job of communicating directly with people instead of having these standalone committees that tend to be ignored in the long run? Well, I, I don't think the people of White Rock much care about uh, the other communities, they, but they are very concerned about our communities. And as I think we've discussed here uh, in previous episodes, uh, Jim, the, the the main thing for people, and and I what, what really uh, makes me feel good is when I look out at the crowd of people and see people that I don't recognize, uh, because these are people that are not normally engaged and don't come to council meetings and don't go to committee meetings and don't go to open houses or don't go to translink meetings. These are people, though, that are now starting to say, you know what, I really love White Rock and I want to be involved. Uh, and I, that was exactly the reason for starting them, as I explained to you before, knocking on the doors uh, numerous times trying to get elected. There were so many people that uh, articulated that they would like to be able to have some way of having their voice heard without uh, having to really go through a, a lot of arduous uh, steps to be able to have their voice heard. So people are very thrilled about it, um, and people talking to each other, too, uh, is is one of the the attributes of their, the, 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 um, something that's come out of the, the community conversations is that groups within our community are now starting to band together and leaving that meeting with each other's phone numbers and emails and vowing to, to, to get in touch and start to create some kind of community uh, activism, whatever it might be. The condo coalition, when we privatized the uh, condo, uh, well, we didn't privatize it. We basically took told 12,000 of the 19,000 residents of White Rock, you're on your own. You go and figure out how to pick up your own garbage because we're getting out of the garbage business. Uh, out, of, out of one of the community conversations, the condo coalition kind of grew from that group. And I've seen uh, at, the, at the last couple of meetings, there's now a couple of uh, people that are starting to organize from within the people that are turning up at the community conversations, which is wonderful. That was the whole idea. The, I think the, the, the name of the community conversation is exactly uh, what I wanted to see. Sure, it's very wonderful for them to have an opportunity to talk to me and Councillor Fathers, elected officials, but it's also really important for them to be able to talk to each other in real time, not just on a Facebook or some blog or something like that they can sit there and say we should you should come to my house for tea and we could actually get mabel and fred and they're interested about this and uh you know start to 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 get people uh back in the whole process because people have acquiesced for so many years they've just things have been basically very good for people but it's it's not ending up that way it's not ending up the way they thought it was going to be so you know now they've actually got a way to, to become involved uh, with their community. Well, I know the general feeling is governments tend to ignore the people, and people have just given up trying to, to influence anything that it, you know affects their lives. And perhaps you're giving people a chance to feel again that maybe their voice can be heard and could have an influence. Well, I think all we have to do is take a look at <clears throat> that, that mess that we had with uh, Christy Clark, and I don't know whether she was the one that originally I did wasn't paying that close of attention because, to be very truthful, I thought closing down the Burrard Street Bridge for a day of yoga was somebody's idea of a bad joke until I realized they weren't joking. So I'm not sure whether, I, I guess it came out of the Premier's office, but you saw the backlash instantly with that, and within a matter of 72 hours or whatever it was, you all of a sudden had you know elected officials, including the Premier, walk into plank going, we've heard you loud and clear, we're not going to do it. So people should realize that, Politicians understand big numbers. It's as simple as that. If four people turn up at City Hall tonight to complain about something, it will be noted. If 400 people turn up at City Hall tonight, it will be more than noted. So it's up to the people, and I, and, and 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 they will they will come. It's it as I say, it's it's starting. It's not going to happen overnight, but people are now starting to to realize that yeah, we can make a difference. Look at that. We made a difference. Yay for us. Let's, let's get on with something else here. So I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very enlightened that, that people are now starting to, to take an active part in our community and I think in other communities as well. David, is there an email or website people can go to to learn more about this? Well, they can go to whiterocksun.com or they could send me an email, editor at whiterocksun.com or, uh, check back on a monthly basis when you and I get together and, 
try to solve some of the problems of the lower mainland. David, thanks a lot for chatting with us. I thank you for your time. My guest has been David Chesney, White Rock City, B.C. Councillor. You're listening to the Goddard Report on TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Check us out on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet or take a look at our popular YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. Comments about the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.